In today's video we're going to have a little circuit fun, looking at a stair step generator circuit. Now while it's pretty easy to generate a stair step signal using like a D to A converter, maybe a counter, or even a microcontroller, this one uses none of that. It just uses a 555 timer, a dual op amp, and a pair of transistors. So pretty interesting little circuit, so I thought it'd be fun to uh, kind of tear it apart and see how it works. I have to thank my friend Pete, K2LCN. He was playing with this circuit and he sent me a video to show me. I'll put a link to Pete's video in the video notes below. The circuit that Pete showed in his video uh, came out of this journal here. Now while it worked fine, it required a, a split supply, you know, plus or minus 15 volts, because it used a, a pair of uh, 741 op amps. So I decided to modernize the circuit a little bit and alter it a little bit uh, for my version here. And uh, what I did is I eliminated the need for a split supply, adjusted the circuit slightly so that it would use a single supply rail to rail op amp. So, and this circuit will actually operate from you know, 5 volts up to 12 or 15 volts, anywhere in between. So let's go take a look at uh, how this circuit works and have some fun with it. Now the circuit actually consists of three sub-blocks. Uh, two oscillator circuits that you can see on uh, channel 1 and channel 3 here. And uh, a kind of unique uh, pulse integrator or pulse accumulator circuit that actually builds the stair step using these two inputs. And we'll take a look at those here on the schematic and how each of these sub-blocks work. First thing we'll do is take a look at the two oscillators. Uh, there's one kind of uh, reset oscillator here that kind of starts the stair step over each time it pulses, and then a higher frequency or higher repetition rate narrower pulse generator that's used to generate essentially each step going up the stair step. So let's take a look at uh, how both of these signals are generated. The lower frequency pulse that resets the stair step is generated by this little Schmidt trigger relaxation oscillator. Let's take a look at how this works. Uh, consider the case where the capacitor is initially discharged. So that point here is sitting at ground, therefore this guy is sitting at ground. If we ignore this resistor for the time being, we can see that the voltage at the non-inverting input is VCC divided by 2 due to this resistor divider. That's going to cause this output to go high. Now since this is a rail to rail op amp, and this output essentially goes to the positive rail or VCC, that puts this 15K resistor in parallel with the 33K resistor. So in actuality, the voltage that appears uh, at this point is going to be above VCC over 2. Now because this output is high, we're, all, we're going to set, start charging up that capacitor through the 2.2K resistor and diode D3. And that process is going to continue, the voltage here is going to continue to raise until we essentially reach and cross the voltage that appears at the non-inverting input. As soon as, we, as soon as this voltage goes above the voltage at the non-inverting input, the output is going to go low. Once that goes low, now this resistor is going to be in parallel with the lower resistor. And the voltage at the non-inverting input is going to drop down below VCC over 2. So now the voltage here is actually sitting much higher than the voltage that appeared here because we've just pulled that voltage down. When that voltage comes down, we're no long longer sending a charge current through here because this voltage here is going to be above the output or above the output of the op amp. So that diode turns off and we're going to start discharging the capacitor through this diode and this resistor down into the output. And that keeps going until the voltage on the capacitor drops down below this new threshold, in which case it flips and the whole process starts all over again. We're using these two steering diodes to control how quickly we can charge and discharge the capacitor. And you can kind of see that in the output. We're going to charge the capacitor relatively quickly because we're going through just a 2.2K resistor into the 0.1 microfarad cap. So we're going to charge pretty quickly, but then as soon as we charge up and we discharge, we're discharging through a 39K resistor, so more than 10 times larger, almost 20, almost 20 times larger. So we're going to have a much longer discharge time, so we're going to spend more time low than we are high. So this simple relaxation oscillator creates this low duty cycle pulse that we're going to use in the circuit. Alright, so let's take a look at the circuit in action. Uh, channel 1 up here is probing the output of the op amp. Channel 2, which is the 
uh, cyan trace is probing the voltage at the non-inverting input and channel 3, the purple trace, is probing the voltage on the capacitor which is essentially the voltage appearing at the inverting input. So we can see when the output goes high, all right, the uh, capacitor now gets charged through the 2.2K resistor, so that charges up pretty quickly. And once the voltage on the capacitor reaches the uh, voltage appearing at the non-inverting input, then the output changes state, it goes low. When it goes low, it also brings down the voltage that's appearing at the uh, non-inverting input, and it also causes the capacitor to now get discharged through D4 in a 39K resistor. Now we can see that takes a lot longer, of course, because 39K is not going to discharge it as fast as the 2.2K charges it. As soon as that voltage gets down to the voltage that is at the non-inverting input at that point, the output changes state, this voltage jumps up, and the whole process starts all over again. Now, of course, you can adjust the pulse width and repetition interval by essentially changing these two resistors individually. If you want to change everything kind of ratiometrically, you could just adjust the capacitor. Then the pulse width and repetition interval will change kind of in concert. But if you want to adjust one with respect to the other, you could simply just adjust the 2.2K and 39K resistors. Now the pulse train responsible for creating each of the steps is done using a 555 timer. Now it's also a low duty cycle pulse train and of course it could have been done using the same relaxation oscillator we just talked about and all you have to do is synchronize the two together. Let's take a look at how we're doing this with a 555. The operation is actually pretty similar. Uh, the 555 timer is set up so that the charge time of the capacitor, okay, which is essentially the on time of the output, is uh, formed with this 4.7K resistor and diode D2. That is the charging path for this cap. Once that charging voltage gets up high enough, uh, then the 555 um, triggers the discharge. The discharge of the cap is then through D1 and the 39K resistor. So you can see again, we've got a charge path with a lower value resistor that creates a narrow pulse and a discharge path through a larger value resistor that creates the longer off time. So again, you can play with these values to get the pulse width and repetition interval that you want. And of course, you know that could have been done with that relaxation oscillator. But the other thing we're taking advantage of with the 555 is the ability to start this at a particular time. So there's a connection between the first circuit um, and this one here through the reset line. So we've got a transistor here, let me kind of pull this up, a transistor that's being driven from the output of that first oscillator and that reset that pulls down and resets the 555 so it starts essentially at with the same period as our initial oscillator. So that's how we reset. We make sure that we're starting the first step right after uh, this pulse you know, turns on. So uh, that's how we're synchronizing these two oscillators together. Okay, so here we can see on the scope, uh, this is our reset pulse that's coming in uh, right here from the first oscillator. So we can see as soon as that reset pulse lets go, uh, the capacitor uh, right here uh, is being charged up through the 4.7K resistor and D2. So that's what we're plotting here on channel 2. And we can see once that, volt, that gets to two-thirds of VCC, then the uh, discharge is turned on. The discharge is actually then pulling current through D1 and the 39K resistor, discharging that capacitor. And then once it gets down to one-third VCC, that's how the 555 works, the cycle lets, uh, the discharge lets go, and the charge can start happening again through the 47K resistor. So you can kind of see how that charge-discharge cycle works to create the output, which is the purple trace. Okay, so we've seen how to create the reset pulse with the relaxation oscillator. We've seen how to create these narrow pulses here with the 555 timer and synchronize it with the reset pulse uh, using the reset line of the 555. Now how do these two combine to create a stair step? And that's kind of the interesting part of this circuit. Let's take a look at that. And the stair step is formed using this circuit here which is configured as kind of a pulse integrator or pulse accumulator circuit. Let's take a look at how that works. 
start off with uh, this capacitor being discharged. Its voltage is sitting essentially at ground. Okay, so that's at ground. Um, uh, and then this is at ground. Everything's at ground. And the output here is essentially at ground. Now, as soon as the 555 timer pulse goes high, we're going to start charging the capacitor through the 10K resistor. As we start doing that, this voltage raises up. That causes the output to go high here. That also starts charging the capacitor in that way. This voltage doesn't slam all the way to the rail, though, because of the negative feedback. All right. So essentially, during that charge time, that narrow little pulse here, we're going to just charge up the leading edge uh, of the stair step. Now, as soon as this pulse now goes low again, this is where the interesting thing happens. When this voltage goes low, uh, essentially we're going to have ground at this point. There's going to be some voltage at the stair step sitting here. Now, because there's a voltage drop across this resistor, that means there's a current flowing in that resistor. And since no current flows here, uh, that same current is essentially going to be flowing through this 10K resistor. So the voltage drop across this guy is equal to about the same voltage drop across that guy. All right, so we're going to have about you know 2x of this voltage, you know, appearing here of this voltage appearing here. Now, if we take a look at what's going on on the other side here, we've also got a, a, a 10k resistor string that's dividing that voltage in half. So nominally speaking, these two voltages are going to be the same. So the op amp isn't going to be doing anything to try to charge or discharge that capacitor very quickly. It's going to kind of hold the voltage. So when this output is low, we essentially have a voltage divider going up, voltage divider coming down. These two voltages are the same. So this voltage kind of gets held. It's going to discharge a little bit because of leakage currents and imbalances, but it's not going to move very much. So it's going to basically stay still as long as this voltage is low. As soon as this voltage goes high again, then we're going to start charging that capacitor up again. We create the next step until it goes low again, at which point it kind of holds. So it's kind of like a, a sample and hold type circuit almost, integrating each of these pulses into these various stair steps. Now this process will continue until we charge this capacitor up so much that we can't, you know, we hit the rail here from the output of the op amp, or um, our reset generator here turns this transistor on. When it does that, it actually takes all the charge off that capacitor, brings you right back down to the starting point. Notice at the same time, it's also resetting the 555 timer. So we're resetting both of these caps, one in the timer and one in the pulse accumulator, uh, at this rate from that uh, first pulse generator we talked about. So that's what resets the stair step generator to start all over again. Of course, we can see this action if we zoom in on this a little bit here. In fact, if we zoom in here, we can actually see that the stair step is rising during that on time of that pulse, you know, from the 555 timer. In fact, if we kind of offset this a little bit and kind of push that in here, and uh, let me just make that a little bit bigger even. We can actually see uh, the stair step is rising during that little pulse, and then it's holding until the next one comes along. And then when our reset pulse comes along, we reset that voltage back down again, we start all over again. So a pretty interesting little circuit to create you know, some stair steps from some narrow pulses here, and then reset that with, a, with another pulse, creating an analog stair step generator with no memory, no D to A converter. Just uh, an interesting use of some op amps and the 555 timer. Well, nothing really special about any of the components here. Uh, the transistors are just general purpose, you know, like 2N3904, 2N2222, just general purpose, you know, low power uh, NPN transistors. The diodes, nothing special, just simple switching diodes like 1N914 or 1N4148s. Uh, the op amp I used was an LMC6482, uh, but just, you know, any low power you know, reasonably good rail-to-rail -rail op amp would work just fine in that case. And of course, the 555 timer. But a fun circuit, lots of uh, things to play around with in terms of timing, and just an interesting circuit to learn about oscillators and reset circuits, and this very interesting little uh, pulse accumulator or pulse integrator circuit. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. Uh, again, take a look at Pete's original video that kind of inspired this whole thing in the link uh, kind of down below the video here. And of course, if you like what you see, you know, give me a big thumbs up, 
you know, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And thanks again, as always, for watching.